these poor snakes have just been sitting up there and we've been shooting at them and they've had no defense so it's time to give the snakes something some way to fire back so we are going to make the snakes fire back at the hero now one might think that we could use the bullet to do this and there are ways to do that but right now it's a lot easier for us to create the enemy bullet so something of the snake's own so i'm going to make a class called enemy bullet and we have to think of something that the snake is going to fire at us so the snake can fire those looks good remember we're going to replace all of these images later so it doesn't really matter too much what we pick so now here's an enemy bullet and we're going to make a snake fire it now a snake isn't going to fire the same way we are with with us we hit the space bar and we get a bullet but we want the snake to fire automatically so how can we do that well we have a timer let's use it so we're going to go to the snake and the same way, and I'm going to copy and paste code whenever I can, I gave the hero a timer in the last video. So I'm going to take this timer here, and I'm going to give every enemy a timer as well. So now every enemy that gets created has its own timer called Shot Timer, which is fine. We can use that name because we're in a whole different class. We're not in the hero class, we're in the enemy class. So every enemy will have a Shot Timer. And now what we want to say is in the act method, if the shot timer, if in a control space right there, if the milliseconds elapsed gets to be greater than, let's say, three seconds, so 3,000 milliseconds, if that happens, let's fire a bullet. Now, how do we fire a bullet with the hero? Oh, right. We added an object. So I'm going to copy that exact code. Actually, while we're at it, might as well get the other one too. I'm going to copy both those lines of code, and I'm going to paste it right here. And what this says is let's get the current world, and we're going to add an enemy bullet to that world. Now, do we have to change these? Well, where do we want the bullet to come from? We want it to come from the current coordinates of the snake. And since we're coding in the enemy, that's what we're going to get. So we don't change that, and we don't change this. So this means that every three seconds, the snake is going to fire a bullet. Let's see if it works. Look at that. Okay, so we're getting bullets. Now we have to tell the bullets to move. Here, this is the code that we used to make the bullets of the hero go up the screen. So in the enemy bullet class, I'm going to paste, but I'm going to add to make it go down the screen. And I'm going to have to make another move val variable here. And the enemy's bullet, let's make it move a little slower. So we'll put it at six. And now, there we go. Now that's pretty fast actually. Um, we'll make those bullets move slower, but you can see it's working. Now we have the same problem, if they're stopping at this edge, but we did the same thing with these bullets here. So these bullets, we said, hey, move, and then if you intersect with an enemy, go away, and if you get too high, go off the screen. This is the hero's bullet, don't forget. But we're gonna take this exact code, we're gonna put it in the enemy bullet, and we're just gonna alter it. If the enemy bullet hits, so if the enemy bullet, this one here, hits the hero, so we want to check to see if we hit the hero. So I replace all these words here with hero. And instead of E, maybe a variable named H would make more sense. And if we do hit the hero, we want to remove the hero, and we want to remove the enemy bullet. Else, if the Y coordinate gets too big, so we're gonna to test to see if it gets too big. 390, because remember our world is 400 high. Then we're gonna remove it. So this code that you see here is extremely similar to the bullet code. 
It's just that one's going up, one's going down, one's looking for enemies, one's looking for heroes, but ultimately that's pretty much it. So let's see what happens. We'll run it, and notice they all go off the screen, and if one hits me, the hero goes away. So there we go, we're getting pretty close here. Now while we're at it, one thing I'm going to add, notice the enemy bullets are pretty big. A long time ago, in a video now far, far away, I talked about the difference between a constructor and an act method. An act method, such as this, this happens over and over and over and over and over and never stops as long as the game is going. A constructor is a special method that only happens once. It only happens when that object is made or constructed. And a constructor always has the same name as the class itself. See how this says public my world? That's because my world is right here. What I'm about to do is build a constructor for the enemy bullet. I'm going to put it up at the top because typically that's where it's supposed to go. Public enemy bullet. The exact same way it is here. And then I put two brackets and I open some brackets here. So this, I'm going to put a little comment, this is the constructor of the enemy bullet. It's only going to happen when the bullet is created, only once, never again. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to take the image that makes up the bullet. So I type get image, two brackets, dot, and then down here, there's a scale feature. And I want to scale it to be smaller. Let's say 20 pixels by 20 pixels. And that's it. If I put that code in, watch the difference in the bullets. Oops. Watch the difference in the bullets now. See, they're smaller, 20 by 20. And they still might be a little big, so I can go back, oops, into the enemy bullet and say, you know, though I want to be, say, 12 by 12. And again, we can do this, uh, bull size equals 12. And if I weren't making them square, maybe I'd make an X and a Y, but I want these bullets to be essentially the same size. So this is the width, and this is the height. So if I try this now, I should have bullets that are smaller. There we go, better. And now I've got a fairly playable game where they're shooting at me and I'm shooting at them. So now at least it's kind of fair. Um, I think we'll leave it there for now. So we have snakes shooting, we learned how to scale, we learned what a constructor was. Next up, one thing you will notice, the snakes all shoot at the exact same time. And that's good for them, but maybe not good for us, because if I'm standing in the middle and they all fire, pretty hard to get away. Oh, I did it. But it's pretty hard to get away generally. So how do we make it so that the, shades, the snakes shoot at random times? And that's what we will do in our next video.